Over the past 48 hours, we just entered the most dangerous phase of the coming hot war with Russia and China, and no one is prepared for what's coming. Everyone but a few smart people are actually ignoring it. The media would rather distract you with new COVID variants and masking concerns at your children's school. COVID cases are on the rise across the nation and in our area, which means something many of us thought we'd seen the last of is back. Businesses, hospitals, even colleges, including one in our area, reinstating mask mandates. Yeah, those are important stories, but they're missing the most important story in the world and they're all ignoring it right now. Look at Drudge today for crying out loud. Look at CNN, top story about Burning Man. What about Fox News? Nope, it's all about DeSantis. But don't fall for it. It's all a misdirection. Look over here while President Biden is caught taking millions of dollars from foreign companies. So what's a good way to distract from a crumbling economy if you're President Biden heading into an election season? Start a war with Russia. Wag the dog. Did you ask for a war with Russia? No, neither did I. But you're about to get one. And my friend Tucker Carlson just exposed the entire plan. So once you start indicting your political opponents, you know that you have to win or else they're going to indict you if they win. Right. Right. And so they can't lose. They will do anything to win. So how do they do that? They're not going to do COVID again. I know everyone on the right is afraid they're going to do COVID and mask mandate. They're not going to do that. They can't do that. If they've already been exposed, that won't work. There's going to be, no, what are they going to do? They're going to go to war with Russia. That's what they're going to do. There will be a hot war between the United States and Russia in the next year. And really? On the, of, yes, of course. They want it anyway. A hot war with Russia. Remember, we're at war with Russia already, but we're doing it through a proxy, using Ukrainians to fight the war, sending them billions of dollars in weapons. More than 400,000 Ukrainians are now dead. More than 2.5 million are permanently disabled. So we're using Ukraine until we can't use them anymore. When all of their men are dead, then we'll have to send our own troops. And it's all part of the plan, which Congressman Adam Schiff explained. We fight Russia over there so we don't have to fight them here in Washington, D.C. The United States aids Ukraine and her people so that we can fight Russia over there and we don't have to fight Russia here. Now, Tucker only exposed one big piece of this plan, which is the Russian piece. The other piece is the economic side, which we'll get into in a second. But first, on the Russian side, something happened this week that almost no one covered. We covered it on our show, but it was radio silence in most of the mainstream media. The Biden administration quietly laying out a plan to make it impossible for any future president to keep us out of a hot war with Russia. By the way, Russia has already said that this will lead to direct war with their military, and China is standing by, ready to jump in. So according to the Wall Street Journal, what the Biden administration did is astonishing. They introduced a plan to permanently fund Ukraine's proxy war against Russia, and the structure would make it impossible for a future president to undo the plan. Think of it like Obamacare, but on steroids. Everyone, including a Republican president and a Republican Congress, tried to unravel Obamacare, but they couldn't do it. The structure is virtually permanent. The same is true of this plan for Ukraine. So what is the likelihood that in the next few months we are involved in a nuclear war with Russia? Colonel Tony Schaefer says 80%. And he agrees with Tucker on this. And he says we are headed for a nuclear war with Mother Russia. Do you share Tucker's view on it? Um, the answer is it's very likely. I put it at the 80% likelihood. Vladimir Putin, who is not bluffing, he is doing what he believes is necessary to protect the Russian Empire, the Russian Republic. It is what it is. And George, uh, uh, the West, England and, and the United States in particular, don't seem to be listening to him. He's been very clear about what he's trying to achieve. Well, Russia is not bluffing. They've now put their nuclear arsenal on the highest alert possible for the first time ever. Quoting now, the nuclear-capable Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile system was previously touted by President Putin as being capable of hitting any target on Earth and is widely believed to be by far the longest range missile in Russia's arsenal. And it's been nicknamed by NATO the Satan II. Nice name, Satan II. The timing of all of this is on purpose, of course. Putin is not bluffing. This warhead can wipe out a country the size of France. Just one rocket, and it can't be shot down. Putin says, quote, the new complex has the highest tactical and technical characteristics and is capable of overcoming all modern means of anti-missile defense. It has no analogs in the world and won't have for a long time to come. In other words, nothing can stop it and nothing can come close. Oh, good. So why don't we keep poking the bear, President Biden? 
The reason the United States is so desperate, though, is because the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar, which of course is losing favor around the world to settle oil transactions as the world's reserve currency, it's slipping away beneath their feet right now. There's no better indicator of this than in Africa over the past few weeks. We've seen four different military coups ousting their leaders who have been in bed with Western countries for decades. Another African leader toppled by the army, whose turn Will it be next? The United States and France have been stealing Africa's resources for decades, keeping these countries in a permanent state of poverty. We've been stealing their manganese, their gold, their silver, their uranium, their lithium, their oil. These African countries are saying enough is enough. What people want is to gain back their wealth, the, back their uranium, their gold, their iron, their uh, phosphate, their oil, their gas. And this scares the West. I mean, look at Niger, which told the French to get out of our country, stop stealing our resources. And the French got so pissed this week that they decided to smash all of the trucks that they had there at their mines. So we're going to leave. Yeah, fine, we'll leave all the mines alone, but we're going to smash all the trucks on the way out. Can you believe these guys? And then last week, the country of Gabon did the same thing. France and the United States are in a panic mode right now. Victoria Newland from the United States went to Africa in a panic mode. And according to the Gray Zone, people who attended the meetings had never seen her so desperate. Why? Why is she so desperate? Because Vladimir Putin just welcomed these African nations into a new friendship, and so did China, where they can keep their own minerals, they can keep their own sovereignty, make partnerships that benefit those countries. Oh, they know they're needling the West. The West can't let this happen. They can't let Russia and China create these friendships and these partnerships. And today, Moscow is warning NATO, back off or else. Russia's UN envoy, Dmitry Polyansky, says NATO's involvement in Ukraine has created a big risk of a direct clash between Russia and the West. He also said something very interesting. He said they've been hearing radio messages and transmissions that a number of NATO members, generals and soldiers, have been killed in Ukraine. So something really fishy is going on, guys. Why is NATO leaking information about the deaths of their generals and soldiers being killed in fighting with Russia? They're not even supposed to be there. They know Russia is listening. They know this information is getting out. You don't do that unless you want to use it for some big purpose. Something big is happening, and I'm really scared as to what comes next. So get ready. That's the news update part of today's video. Now I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is tied directly to this global demand for minerals. That company is FE Battery Metals. Now, they deal directly with the global demand for lithium. It's also known as the white oil because the demand is off the charts for lithium. Here's their stock ticker on your screen. Write this down. They're a small market cap company that owns some of the best lithium land in the hottest lithium mining district in Canada. It's the James Bay Lithium Zone. And they bought up all of this great land next to the hottest mines in North America. They're like, oh, a bunch of billionaire companies over here are mining this lithium land. Well, let's buy up all the land around it. Now, the reason I'm releasing this video today is because of what the unbelievable timing of all of this means and with their exploration for lithium that they're doing right now in Canada and the news and the supply chain disruption of lithium worldwide. First, you had the country of Chile which nationalized their lithium mines. It took them over, said that we're not going to have any country taking our lithium anymore. We're going to do that. We will profit from it. It's also a national security risk, so they want to protect their lithium mines in Chile. Now, when Chile nationalized lithium, the price of lithium bottomed out and then started to rally. So we are now in a bull market for lithium. Another important note here is that China has also basically cornered the market on lithium. How do you think that's going to be sitting with Western leaders as they're trying to build out this entire battery infrastructure for electric vehicles around the world? They know they are screwed and China has cornered the market. And get this, the United States has only one lithium mine, one lithium mine in production in the United States because we've outsourced it all to China. So China and Russia in one move could shut it all down. All exports of lithium to American companies overnight, Ford, GE, Tesla would all be screwed. If we get any hotter in this war with Russia, it's game over for getting lithium, for getting natural gas, for getting uranium, getting oil from Russia and China, all of it. And that's why GE just announced a major $650 million investment in lithium mining. And then like clockwork, all of the other auto companies started doing the same thing. Volvo in talks to try and buy lithium mining companies. Tesla did the exact same thing. They're all scrambling right now because China has just cornered the market on just about everything that we need to run our Western economies. And they did it all 
without firing a bullet, by the way. We should learn from them. We spend $20 trillion and invade other countries to get our way. If you're an investor, you better pay attention to what I'm about to show you because this company, FE Battery Metals, could explode when they announce lithium drilling results. That's right. Now, if you know anything about the mining sector, you know that a stock usually takes off like a rocket after they announce drilling results. If they have positive drilling results and the stock is trading at 35 cents, boom. Right? That's exactly what happened last month when I told you about another company before they announced drilling results. Their stock price doubled overnight, about 48 hours, and now it's at a new all-time high. So thanks for all the emails about it. I know many of you sent me nice emails about it. I know you made a lot of good profits on that one, but it's really you that needs to pat yourself on the back because you've done homework, you've researched their project, and then you took action on it. So let me tell you about FE Battery Metals. They're a small market cap company. And the CEO is doing exactly what I would be doing if I ran this company. He's bought land next to the hottest lithium mining territory in Canada and some of the biggest mining companies in Canada. They've literally bought land surrounding some of the hottest spots in the world. And that land is sitting next to multi-billion dollar lithium mining companies. And they're doing soil tests. And over and over right now, they've been finding lithium in their samples. Now it's just a matter of finding the big patch and then it's off to the races in a massive way. And just so you understand why I'm so bullish on this company, is that the land they own is within walking distance of one of the hottest lithium mines in North America. They're that close, and they are ripe for acquisition. So I've watched these acquisitions happen before. And if I'm you know, one of these big mining companies, right, and I'm a multi-billion dollar mining company, and then there's this little guy next to me, this small market cap company that just bought up the land next door, and they strike it rich with lithium in my backyard, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to acquire that company and I will roll their lithium into my holdings. So they are perfectly primed for an acquisition once they hit pay dirt. That's a nice exit and a stock price that is handsomely rewarded for shareholders when that happens. Now remember, America has one mine. That's it. And the numbers out this week on lithium are stunning. Europe is ending combustion engine cars by 2035, right? Well, we were just in Norway last week and the Norwegians are very excited about getting rid of all combustion engines moving all to EVs and all to battery technology. Uh, okay, good luck with that. So they're going to be illegal to buy combustion engines. The U.S. is about to do the same thing. The Biden administration says he wants it done by 2035. And this is all a World Economic Forum plan, by the way. No more combustion engines. So the demand for lithium is off the charts. Just look at the amount of minerals needed to make an electric car versus a combustion engine car. Copper, lithium, nickel, cobalt, zinc, just to name a few. So the need, again, off the charts. And FE Battery Metals has been snapping up all of this lithium land. So here is their stock ticker on the screen once again. The stock is trading right now at 33 cents a share. It's up about 10% over the past month. So guys, keep your eye on this company over the next few weeks. Again, trading at 33 cents a share. Let's see what happens to that share price once they hit a big patch of lithium. I'll have links to their website in the description below. Go out and check their latest drilling projects. You can see them right on their website. Look at the latest news results and analyze this area in Canada and you'll see what I see. And we'll see you next time, everyone.